sure the people out there know my perspective on it. That's why I'm here. This is your floor. I'm here to interview the youth, to see what y'all got to say, to see what's on your hearts and minds. You know, it's about the youth right now. The people already know what I deal with. I hear that sound. Now, in regards to me, when I look at different texts, for example, right, the manuscripts in regards to what, what, what we call the Bible, right, there's several manuscripts. A lot of the problem is, like, the Hebrew Israelites, those are my brothers, man. I respect them, their nation building. I respect their militant mindset. But they have some discrepancies in regards to the things that they teach, all right? Now, me, I'm not nobody that stays in no one book, all right? When I deal with the Bible, I deal with it from a scientific, I deal with it from a historical perspective. So that way we can look into it to see if there's anything in it to tell us the history of our people, okay, to tell us the condition of our people, and if it gives us a solution. If any book that you pick up does not deal with your people first and foremost, especially if you're a Hebrew Israelite, you know that they dealt with their people first. Okay? If there's anything in there that's contrary to science, get rid of it. Anything that's in there that's contrary to history that don't correlate, get rid of it. We have to make modifications to the text because we live in different time and age. You feel what I'm saying? So when I deal with the Hebrew Israelite brothers, I have to let them know, listen, you have to interject science. For example, the story of Adam and Eve. And so I'm going to give you exclusive when I do the lecture down in, in Atlanta. You're going to have it. Adam and Eve deals with Y chromosome on Adam and deals with uh, mitochondrial Eve. And if you don't know anything about science, you don't know what that's about. But you got to understand, those people at that time had a particular mindset. Three things. First and foremost, they claimed to be inspired by a higher power. Number two, they were limited in the scope of knowledge that they had in regards to history and science that we have an advantage today. And number three, these men were fallible. You feel what I'm saying? So if you read the text and you look at it from that perspective, you're going to see all these different things. And we have to look at it from a different standpoint today. So, okay, let's examine this from a scientific standpoint. Let's examine this from a historical standpoint. So when you understand science, you understand that the Most High was dealing with Y chromosome on Adam. If you don't know what that is, that's the first man that passed on his Y gene, his chromosome. If you want to know anything about mitochondrial E, that's due with the mitochondrial DNA. That's an endosymbiotic bacteria that entered into our cellular DNA. Look that up, man. He was dealing with the Homo sapien. He wasn't dealing with Homo erectus or Homo neanderthal. This is something that if you don't look at science and, and, and respect and regard to your religion and regard to your manuscripts, man, you're going to have our people destroyed for lack of knowledge, man. And that's Jose and 4 and 6 for y'all who know that. I want to turn it around. I want to ask you about reparations because we got Brother Royale. That's what his fight is about. What is your understanding and take on reparations if you have any brother? Uh, in regards to reparation, you got to look at the definition of the word. Reparation. Asian is the act of or the action of, and repar means to repair. Our people are destroyed, man. Okay? Not all of us. Some of us are conscious, but a lot of us are destroyed. In order for you to repair something, you have to first re-educate and then reintegrate, and then they'll be able to receive the reward. First and foremost, our oppressors, what we need to do is find out who was involved with the slave trade. Okay? Let's do a lineage check. Okay? Let's go look at the paperwork. Let's look at the documentation and say who these slave masters are. Then we got to go back to the federal government because who's the first one that offered us reparations? Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln said, I'll give you, I'll give you 40 acres and a mule if you fight with us in the Civil War. What happened after that? There was no payout. We didn't get anything. So first we need to petition the government and stand firm and say, listen, we're not leaving until we get paid. All right? There are statutes, if you look into the Reconstruction Act, whereby which we can, ex we can access all these reparations. But first we have to voice it. We have to stand strong. And we got to say, listen, we know jurisprudence of the law just like you do. And we ain't standing down until we get what we want. That's very important. See, sometimes you have to be diplomatic and sometimes you have to be militant, okay? It depends on the nature of the situation. But first, we need to track down and see who are the real slave masters because those are our enemies. The ones that put us in movement, those are our real enemies, okay? The ones out here that had nothing to do with it because some of these are immigrants that came during the 19, early 1900s um, during Ellis Island. They, they, they're not our enemies. The enemies are the ones that exist in here. They're elite, the ones who control the slave trade. Let's go to them, bring Congress involved, bring the United States government involved, and say, listen, according to certain statutes and acts in USC code, we want our money. We want our 40 acres of the moon. We want our reparations. Y'all have some explaining to do. This is what's up right here because, see, I want y'all to see that we got the youth up in here, man, and this is about the youth right now. I got my brother here all the way from what? Memphis, Tennessee? Tennessee, you know how we get down. I got my brother Divine Prospect up in the field. Yeah, what up, man? I got my man Perry. Perry right here. This is all about the youth, man. I want to see what's in the heart and minds of the youth. We passing the torch on to y'all, man. This is y'all the leaders right now. 
What is your understanding of reparations, my brother? Yeah, man, forget reparations. We don't need nothing from them. You know what I'm saying? It's time to stop asking for something from them. We need to get rid of the welfare, whatever. We need to build what we got. If you know anything about economics, we account for 80% of the money being spent in America. So we got 80% of the money. Why are we asking them for money? You know what I'm saying? We need to take the money that we got and spend it with our own people, bring our money together, let's build our own community centers, put all the religion aside. We can work toward a common goal. I mean, everybody believe in God, so let's do something positive, no matter what your religion is. All put our money together, man. Let's get these uh, women that ain't working to, you know, start homeschooling these kids and stop putting them in these public institutions that's brainwashing them. So by the time they go to college, they ain't believe in nothing uh, that we tell them. They believe in everything that society tell them. Talking about go get a good job, work for a billionaire, and make $50,000 a year. They ain't making no sense. Why don't we work for ourselves, man? For real. So what do you say to them, to the people who say, our ancestors died in the struggle. The Jews, the so-called Jews, got their reparations. Our mothers and fathers built America. You mean to tell me we don't we don't deserve to get our reparations, to get ours back? I want you to answer that. Okay, if we built America, we can build something greater than America. You know what I'm saying? We built America when we was in slavery. Now we so-called free, so let's take our freedom and build something, something totally different. We can have America's old. Let's build something new. Why we want to go something back to something old and give reparations? That they ain't gonna give us. How America gonna give us reparations when America is dead? Come on, let's be real. We ain't getting no reparations, man. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you, what is your plan of action in regards to going about establishing something for our people if we're gonna do it sans reparations? All right. First of all, in order to build a black community, man, the saying go, you know what I'm saying? It takes a village to raise a child, man. We gotta start inside these families, man. For real. For real, before we do anything, how are we gonna do something in the street? We can't fix our own home. We need to start inside the house. Like I said, homeschool these children. Stop sending them to these white public institutions and then wondering why they believe in a white Jesus. Come on, let's be real. Let's start, let's start, let's start inside the home. Cause if you start inside the home, they ain't wanna go, they're not gonna wanna go outside the home. They're going outside the home, so we send them outside the home. Let me ask the, uh, another young soldier over here, Brother Perry. What is your take on reparations? How do you think we need to go about it? If you think we should fight for reparations, talk to us. Um, I agree with a lot of what this brother just said, and I also agree with the, a lot of what this brother said as well. Reparations, if we should be taking back our reparations every day. If you're looking for one day to get paid out for all of the trauma, all of the hurt, all of this pain that what we've been going through, if you want to get paid for one day, that's fucking weak. That's weak as hell to me. I want my reparations every day, and I take it every day. Every time I let these crackers know what's up, every time I step out here and I handle my business, I take back my reparations. Reparations, your reparations is what, reparations is what it is to you. You take your reparations back how you feel. So if you feel like you want to go slice a chop, a cracker head off, go do that shit. If you want to go rob a bank, if you want to run some credit card scams, if you want to get hair from a white girl, take back your motherfucking reparations how you feel. That's how you feel. So reparations is not going to, like, I agree. We're not going to get no damn checks. Now, if another my, another viewpoint on reparations from my view is that y'all already got your damn reparations when you voted for Obama. Y'all all got Obama checks. Y'all getting food stamps. Y'all getting welfare. Y'all getting all of these government benefits. So that's your reparations right there. And y'all ain't doing nothing with it. So if you feel like, you know, you got a problem with what I'm saying, then step your game up and stop depending on the damn system to uh to carry you throughout. Do for self. Learn how to make your own soap, black woman. We, every black woman say they're independent. Learn how to make your own deodorant, your own toothpaste. Teach the babies, you know what I'm saying? Uplift the black man so we can go out here and make this bread and bring it back home. You feel me? So Another that's real. word I want to uh define, redefine in 2014. You know what I'm saying? Revolutionary. Revolution. True revolutionaries are holistic. They live in a straight holistic lifestyle. Vegan, everything. If you eating meat, you supporting white supremacy. If you eating fast food, you support high supremacy. If you buying all of their products, you supporting white supremacy. Unless you live it holistically. Straight up. That's that's real revolutionary. And and teaching the babies at home. That's real revolutionary. And having home births. And uh sovereignty. More science. That's real revolution. That's real revolution. Now, when we get back to taking back birthrights, 
and different things like that, taking our babies out of these systems, that's when we can really say we revolutionaries. When we build institutions in the dark, like Bill Valentine spoke about, that's when we become real revolutionaries. As long as they know about every step we make, ain't nothing revolutionary. The revolution won't be televised, that shit. Come on now. I, do, I wanna say one thing, cause I'm from the South, and I'm be 100% with y'all, man. I feel like all these, like, take a city like New York City, man. In New York City, if you want a, uh, let's say, like a 2,000, 3,000 square foot home or apartment, you're going to have to pay half a million dollars. You know, if you go down to the South, you take a half a million dollars and buy a whole block. Right. All these black folks, move out the city. Let's move to the suburbs where the cost of living is so cheap. And we can buy all the land we need. Buy, you know what I'm saying? Buy farms and build our own, you know what I'm saying? Build our own groceries, have our own food, you know what I'm saying? But we steady. These folks do not want to leave New York City and move to the South. They got to stay in the city, spending all this money for no reason. I live in the South, man. You know what I'm saying? Rent is dirt cheap. So I have I have more flexibility to do things, man. Let's move out to the cities. Let's move to the South. Let's build our own communities. For real, for real. I mean, I, everybody, everybody has some, you know, some, their own points and some positive views they had. Um, I mean, like I said, I agree, with, I agree with everybody, you know. Um, but the main thing is right now, so I, 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 I don't think I can even give you, you know, uh, their view. I can only give you my view right now because my view is, is, is something similar to them. But because I'm the National Economic Development of the Black Panther Party, that's what I, that's, that's my focus is economics. And I see now that, and it, it's, it's real simple. It, I mean, we can talk about all the religion, we do all the debate, all that stuff. But the simple thing is this, right? As long as, no matter what color you are, some some other race besides your own people is clothing, putting food on your uh, the table, right, and putting a shelter over your head, they're going to always be over top. And that's why I'm so, I'm highly upset right now. And just to say, you know, to come from LA and see, well, we're trying to get things going and with a little bit of six percent of black people out there. And then you come out here with four million people in Brooklyn alone, and, and, and God knows how many is in, in, in Harlem and Bronx, and we can't even get no kind of, 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 of unity, no coming together. These brothers getting killed or choked, babies getting uh, killed in, in mother's hands, and we still walking up and down the block like ain't shit, like shit sweet. So I moved out here last week because my that my job is to make sure that we stop a lot of that. Okay, that's what we should be focusing on. Our babies and starting to come back and take back what's ours. Okay, so I have to say these things real quick because I want y'all to understand where, where I'm coming from real quick. So um, I, I made the move to, to New York because once I seen, not just once I seen, but once I see the Eric Gardner thing and I see how there's not there's not a lot of revolutionary organizations out here that's, that's willing to step up. I'm not saying they're not, but it seems like. I mean, you see it, it's something happening every single day. Every time you get on Facebook, every time you turn on the news, it's another brother or sister getting harmed in New York City. And, and like I said, LA, LA ain't even the major problem right now. They, they doing something, I'm not saying they're not, but all you see is New York, New York, New York. So I'm like, you can't, you know, black people, you cannot just throw it on these revolutionary organizations and say, hey, it's up to y'all to do it when this is y'all's community. Y'all living it just like we do. It, it's gonna take everybody to help. So. So, so I'm, I'm going to give out some solutions, right? Some solutions make more sense than just talking a whole bunch of rhetoric, right? So here's a solution. One, uh, a couple months ago, December 28th out here, they had at uh, King's Plaza, Brooklyn. What's the King's Plaza? Mall? Is that what it's called? King's Plaza Mall? Okay. They had an incident where a store in the mall had a racial slur on the t-shirt, right? I know a lot of y'all probably didn't hear about it because the, the news don't want y'all to hear about this, right? But they had a racial slur on the t-shirt. So the, the brother, the young brother, the citizen there was highly upset. What they did was send out a mass text to everybody they could, and guess what? In 30 minutes, they had everybody, so about a thousand kids at that store, tearing it down. So they had to shut them all down, and the police could not handle them. Now, how is it that a lot of people in New York don't know about it? It's crazy as hell to me. But I just let you know that information like that is very vital for the black community or any struggling people that are being, um, you know, beat down and and and. and this shit here is to, is, is to keep y'all uh, in a submissive situation. Think about it, right? The young, the young, the young brother that just got, that just took the video for the air guarder. They messing with him, not even messing with his girl. So that's that, to me. That's for everybody out in New York to see. Hey, listen, if you mess with us, we're gonna get your girl. You know what I'm saying? No, we're gonna take you. And then we can't get to you. We're gonna take your girl. So that, so they're trying to scare y'all. They're using scare tactics, old ass shit, and y'all falling for the shit. Falling for the shit. You know what I'm saying? We have to stand up. If you see this shit happen across the street, you can send a mass tag. You get your ass out there, do something. 
uh, police cannot illegally touch and apprehend anybody. So if you see that, you're allowed to do something. Did not did Pac do it? Did not Pac shoot two unarmed, uh, two, two policemen? And did he did not get away with the shit? But goddamn, push the motherfucker off of him. Say something. Kick some dust in his face. Do some shit. Throw a can at him. It's all kinds of shit on the ground. Do something to, to stop him so he would stop doing what he's doing. Understand this? We're not taking it no more. And they're only going to do this shit to Negroes. Because we keep doing what? Being on our goddamn knees all the goddamn time. We love being on our knees. So that's what, that, that is a solution. That, not, a, not, not the rhetoric. That is a solution. So again, if we can... Uh, we get a conference call number, I don't care what, some kind of number that we can all come to agree with, all the organizations, all the black people they can have, and when we see a, 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 a situation like that happen, we all, uh, you know, we get that shit, that mass text out, email out, and we meet up at that place so that way we can stop that situation from happening. So, all of y'all brothers, y'all don't think, y'all don't think we all just need to come together and just pray, brother? You don't think praying can help us, brother? <laughs> it ain't help us yet, brother, you know what I'm saying? It might help in your personal life. That's physical 3D and that's what I was saying. That don't help you. And that's what I was saying. That's, not gonna, that's, that's, not that's what I was saying. Get us up, up under this oppressor, but it definitely helps you throughout the no, 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 development. No race out here is dependent on religion but as much as us. We're the only one out here running around in religion. Like I said, out, out, out in LA now, the best kids run it. And yes, the name of, they, we know they class. They religious. They, they cat as hell. But guess what? They know how to keep the families together. They know how to take care of each other. They know how they know how to form businesses and take over California. Right now, they're the number one race in California. They over overpopulated the European now. The European is now number two in its own country. So, in, in in response to that, I think that was great. Everything this brother just said, and and unity, I think, is very important. But when people get religious and say we should just pray, praying is good. But even if you look in your text, if you read the Bible, it says faith without works is dead. You feel me? So you can have the faith and pray all you want and hope that things are happening. If you don't put in that work, then what does it matter? At the end of the day, we need plans of action. Then we need a course of action. You understand? And something that we could do to get the most or the least adverse consequences behind our actions. You understand what I'm saying? So number one, we got to start owning things, man. Okay? Things work by titles. If you understand the science behind a title, a title means ownership of something. The problem is with us, we're only transferring titles. We need to get a loyal titles over every asset that we own, and that way we can use that as muscle and as leverage in order to get the things that we want. Number two, we got to support these businesses out here. You know what I'm saying? People walking by all the time. You know what I'm saying? They'll go into a store and buy a CD. They're going to a store and buy a shirt and clothes. You got vendors out here. You know what I'm saying? That's on the grind trying to give back to our community and keeping the money within the community. You know anything about e e e uh, economics, right? Economics is a branch of science that deal with the transfer, the production, and the consumption of wealth. All right? Back when the civil rights movement was happening, the reason why we were so powerful was because we were boycotting things. We don't boycott nothing now. They're shutting down all these black-owned businesses. Ain't nobody saying nothing. You know what I'm saying? We're going to these stores. We saw in every other nation who's setting up in our neighborhoods and our communities, and we're supporting them. Where's the full-time power? Brother just said here as far as consumption power. That's why they haven't gotten rid of us yet, because they know we're the best consumers here in America. And as long as they got us buying their stuff, they're going to continue to use us as the new 2014 slaves. Before, it was physical labor. Now, it's purchasing power. And that's what they're using with us today. So what I'm saying is, when you look at your dollar that you have, make the most out of your money and put it back into your community. That way, we'll have more power to do what we need to do. We got to march. We have the finances to do it, because we keep it in economics in the community. And we need to sit here, and we need to, you know, strong on somebody. We have the weaponry to do it legally and lawfully, because we have the finances to back that up. We need an economy, man. And you got to support all these black businesses that sit here keeping the money within our community. Then we can have a course of action. Then we can buy a load of titles where we're the sovereign over everything that we own, every asset that we own, and we can use that leverage as equity when it comes to buying stuff, when it comes to owning stuff. You got to understand that too. Also, get yourself clear. Understand the law for yourself so you know within the realm of rights, like the brother said right here. If you don't know anything about the penal law, you can't sit here and tell the officer, listen, you can't do this, and if you do, I can defend myself. There's a such thing as a citizen's arrest. Understand that. And if you know that, you can use that same power against the police. If you feel you're being bad, if you feel you're being intimidated, understand the law. That's called jurisprudence. Understand the law, man. Brother, get in here. Brother, what my young brothers out here doing right now, family, they dealing with solutions. This is not rhetoric what you hear. This is solutions coming from my brothers right here, the young soldiers. Check this out. How I overcame. I didn't have, look, I didn't have a father. I didn't have my, I didn't have a mother neither. My mother was a dope fiend. My pops walked out. My mom just leave me in crack houses to go high. 
to get high, lock me in closets and shit like that, right? So I went to prison. I was sitting in the jail cell. I, me, I did five years. It's real shit. Now I mean, I did two years in a box, and I'm sitting in jail. That's the closest thing to being buried alive. I'm sitting in jail. I'm crying. I'm in a box. Like, yo, I'm not crying because I'm afraid of jail. I'm, you know, I'm crying because I'm like, damn, this what my life is gonna amount to? I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? But I realized one thing. I said, no, I'm better than this. I couldn't let my past or what I thought my past was define my present or create my future. If we so start we initiating, we got to start initiating. And I feel like me personally, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass it on, but I want to really get this out. This is important, man. And I feel like a lot of brothers, a lot of older brothers need to get this through their system. Not y'all, but I mean like brothers in the struggle. Stop worrying about the white man. Stop worrying about what they not giving to you. You got to take it. You can't get nothing in this world by accident. You got to take. And Malcolm X said something. He said, yo, you can never morally persuade somebody to understand your struggle. Nobody give a fuck about us, man. They don't care to, what we going. They don't care about all this protest shit. They going to care when we come together. We get our money together. We get our mind together. We get our pocket together. We get our grind together. We get our souls together. You, you feel me? We got to so, stop being little boys and we got to start being men. Period. We eat what we kill. It's hunting season. We eat what we kill. You go that. I'm not. I'm not gonna eat unless I go hunt. Lion Mufasa. He can't show. Listen. He wasn't bringing Simba food. He said, Listen. You go out to the jungle and bring back the kill. Bring back. You gonna kill. You gonna eat what you kill. You understand? So, what we gotta start doing is getting in positions of power. Ain't nobody gonna give it to you. Send light. So I said, Look. Say right. Look. 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 No support from my mother. I wish I would've came from a different pussy. C-section, even in birth, she didn't push me. Bottles on the floor, roaches on the wall. I'm looking at the sky like, God, I deserve more. God gave me this talent, all I wanted was love. My father wanted to fuck, my mother thought it was love. Hard life, hard code. I'm moving at a crazy pace. I'm 25, but it feels like I'm 88. Brandy was my backbone. I ain't never needed daddy. Used to have my old crack bows inside of beef patties. Built it from the ground up. Ask me why I'm so shifty. I've been through hell. Ain't none of y'all burn with me. Homeless, no hope. Washcloth, no soap. I remember being bummy. Used to hold my head low. Now I hold my head high. Used to have it on my mind. Now I got it in my pocket talking about that bread, partner. Mama on drugs. Daddy was a sucker. I know I'm God's child, but why I gotta suffer? Out of town selling crack and I was just a team Got my first blowjob face fucking on the fiend Selling crack to my man mother I can't believe God that's my man mother Yeah, moving all this tan butter It's like we hustle all winter just to die in the summer Devil on voicemail, grim reaper want my number Click full of hater blockers Fuck y'all, eat a dick, gun like a gym, spot and lift all Dropped out of school, always in the hall Dishes on the stove Roaches in the wall, devil want my soul, and I just want a ball. Back to the void, no one at all. You focus, can't sleep, up all night. Looking at the sky like God, please make my money right. My man, I used to dream with him, but he died before I got a chance to cop bees with him, break down cream with him. I don't want to pour liquor, bottle can't replace a lost soul. You was like a brother, no, never letting go, ain't get my own. I gotta stay strong, tell a grim reaper, suck a dick, we still getting rich. I'm the best five years from now, but I'm cocky, so it's like five years is now. When you doubt that bullshit that you've been told, and you need that info, sign that up. Welcome to another Sognetta TV House of Consciousness production. Right now, we're working with the youth. I want y'all to hear what Brother Smart has to say. That's right. His name is Smart. Brother Smart, MC. Check out what Brother Smart has to say. Brother Sutek, the Red Pill. And of course, the mighty Tahir RBG is in the building in Harlem at the House of Consciousness. Peace to the family. 
Brother Red Pill representing Know the Ledge. We here with our brother Sonetta TV. Out here in Harlem, USA, representing another powerful, powerful, powerful episode for the family. We are here with the legendary brother who is responsible for that wave that you brothers and sisters know about called Conscious Revolutionary Music. We have our brother live and direct from um, Orlando, the land of flowers, Florida. Tahir RBG, peace to the God. Black power is definitely in the building. All right. Yes, sir. RBG for life, brother. I want you to introduce yourself to the family. My name is Tahir RBG, representing Repat Nation and all Africans all around the world. Black power, RBG, stand up. That's what I represent. Now. We have a, we also have in the building our brother, the illustrious, industrious brother Sutek, live and direct in the building. Peace, God. Peace, brothers. Death to the Negro. Interested to see what this brother got to get it in with right here. Powerful brother. Gonna let y'all know something. Now, <laughs> relax. Long when long we gotta relax. I just wanna ask you a question, my brother, before you get started. Let the people know what you represent, what it is about, what um, what you are about. And I also want to know, how did you get involved with the dead friend situation? Talk to us about the history of that. That people don't know the behind the scene, man. You've been behind the scene. Talk to us about that, brother. How did that all start, brother? Well, first off, I represent, like I say, Repat Nation, um, African liberation, 100%. Black power, that's what I represent in all as facets. If you bout it like that, we rep together. If you not bout it like that in the instance, that's the part where we, we got we got some challenges at. So um, you know, that's a wide array. We just that's what I'm about. Um, as far as dead prayers, those are my brothers, Stick M1. Me and Stick grew up together in uh Tallahassee. And uh we met M1 at Florida AM. And um yeah, man, from there, you know, it was like, like minds, you know what I'm talking about? And I, I do production. Um, that's what I do for for the crew, production. And uh, we, had, we linked up, and we did what we do. We just kept it 100. And, you know, the rest is, the rest is history. Um, ain't too much, uh, ain't too much back. You know, much more backdrop than that. If you, you know, if you if you get it in with your homies, then you know how we got it in. We just get it in with our homies all the time, and that's that's what it's about. At that point in your career, what were you studying? What were y'all getting into, knowledge-wise, that made you brothers say to yourselves that we could put this knowledge on wax? Revolutionary. And these days and times, they came out in the biggie in the, in the in that era. From my recollection, they came out during that era. So I'm like, yeah, that mob deep era. So it was like, what made y'all not take that route of the drug dealer, the hustler, the party and bullshit, and all of that other stuff and go totally against the grain?